Botulinum toxin is an exotoxin produced by Clostridium botulinum, which is an anaerobic gram positive bacterium. Botulinum toxin acts on the presynaptic cholinergic nerve terminals at the neuromuscular junction. Synaptic vesicles containing acetylcholine release this neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine then acts on the receptors of the muscle to cause muscle contraction. So, botulinum toxin causes presynaptic inhibition of acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction. Botulinum toxin types A and B are available for commercial use. Toxin A is available in powder form and must be reconstituted with saline in a concentration of 5 to 10 units per 0.1 ml. If reconstituted with non-preserved saline, it has to be used within 4 hours, otherwise it can be kept up to a week. Toxin B is available in a ready-to-use liquid form. Botulinum toxin usually starts to act within a few days with full action in about 5 days. However, often this may be delayed up to about 4 weeks. The action commonly lasts for a few months, sometimes even up to and beyond 6 months. Coming to the clinical uses of botulinum toxin in ophthalmology, we shall first consider the movement disorders such as essential blepharospasm where there is idiopathic, involuntary, forceful orbicularis contraction. Botulinum toxin is the treatment of choice in this condition and is given in the dose of 12.5 to 25 units per eye of toxin A injected into the preceptal orbicularis in the medial and lateral aspects of both eyelids, avoiding the central region to minimize the risk of ptosis. Uh, adverse effects include ptosis, dry eye and lag of thermos with exposure, keratopathy. Similarly, botulinum toxin is used in oromandibular dystonia, in Meigs syndrome which is a combination of essential blepharospasm and oromandibular dystonia, in hemifacial spasm and cervical dystonia. Some cases of strabismus may be an indication for botulinum toxin which must be injected into the muscle which needs to be weakened, preferably using electromyographic guidance. Indications include infantile esotropia, small angle acquired esotropias, sometimes in intermittent exotropia and in abducens palsy. Botulinum toxin is useful to induce ptosis for corneal protection as an alternative to tarsorophy, to reduce synkinesis that occurs following recovery from facial palsy in some individuals, and rarely in long-term facial palsy, it can be injected on the normal side to improve facial symmetry. Eyelid apraxia is an inability to raise the upper eyelid in the absence of paralysis or damage to the levator. It is usually due to supranuclear causes. An injection into the pretarsal orbicularis can be beneficial. In thyroid eye disease, injection of botulinum toxin into the levator helps to reduce eyelid retraction and into the inferior rectus muscle reduces the raised IOP that occurs due to restrictive myopathy while looking upwards. In selected cases, pending more definitive treatment, injection of botulinum toxin into the retrobulbar space can help in reducing mechanical compression of the optic nerves by the narrowing of the muscle bellies. Injection into the lacrimal gland reduces tears due to hypersecretion of any cause. In entropion, temporary relief may be obtained by injection into the pretarsal or preceptal orbicularis. Botulinum toxin may be used to reduce both dynamic and static facial wrinkles. Botulinum toxin may also be used in congenital and acquired nystagmus to improve vision and reduce oscillopsia, in the treatment of tics, tremors and myokymia, in chronic dry eyes by injecting medially, it reduces the pump mechanism of the orbicularis, thus helping in conserving tears. Pain can be reduced by giving local 
anesthesia and using ice prior to injection. Ptosis is the most common complication and the incidence can be reduced by keeping away from the central part of the eyelid, reducing the volume of injection and staying as far away from the levator as possible. Diplopia is usually due to involvement of the inferior oblique. Orbicularis weakness can cause epiphora. Antibodies can sometimes form to the toxins and they often cross-react between type A and type B toxins and some miscellaneous side effects may also occur.